intention of today's Mass is for John Duane. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and with your spirit. My friends, as we gather together today on the feast day of St. Barnabas, apostle, martyr, and as his name says, son of encouragement, let us call to mind our sins and ask for the encouragement of the mercy and reconciliation that God wishes to extend to each of us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who decreed that St. Barnabas, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, should be set apart to convert the nations, grant that the gospel of Christ, which he strenuously preached, may be faithfully proclaimed by word and by deed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart. For he was a good man, filled with the Holy Spirit and faith and a large number of people were added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, our response this morning is, the Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, 
with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise. We are so familiar with these phrases of our Lord from the Sermon on the Mount, which we're reading through in these days in the lectionary. You are the salt of the world, the light of the world, the city set on a hilltop for all to see. Those, those images of salt and light and the city on a hill are vivid in our own memory, I think, as being examples of the faith as something that is filled with zeal, something that is giving light and vision to people, something that is part of an effective witness we give to Christ himself. And that's true. Those who were listening to Christ at the time, those many first century Jews and God-fearing Gentiles, would, would have heard something a little bit more because each one of those elements is intimately connected to one of the most central realities in their experience, which is the temple in Jerusalem, the place of priestly sacrifice on behalf of all God's chosen people. The salt was used in, in flavoring the showbread, which was kept in the altar uh, by the altar of sacrifice in the temple itself. Remember, David and his, and his soldiers entered to eat the showbread that was usually reserved to the priests in their uh, battle against David's enemies. Remember that? That's something associated with the temple. There is bread in the Jewish temple, too, as in a Catholic church. And the light, the inner sanctum, of the Jewish temple was lighted with the candles of the menorah, calling to mind the, the uh, battle of uh, uh, those who fought for, for Jewish freedom against their Greek enemies. And the city on a hill is Jerusalem itself. It is the highest point of Jerusalem where the temple itself is, Mount Zion. So these are intimately associated with the idea of priestly sacrifice. Now, we are baptized into Christ, and in the rite of, an, rite of baptism, we are told that every one of us is united with Christ in baptism, with Christ as priest, prophet, and king. And that priestly function of the faithful, that priesthood of the laity, is associated with our offering the sacrifice of the mass together in, led by the priest at the altar. But it's meant to be carried out in our own daily lives as well. Which brings us to St. Barnabas. Barnabas, his name 
itself means son of encouragement. And we see that he was one of the earliest disciples in Antioch. He was a native of nearby Cyprus. He was a devout Jew who had become a Christian. And he becomes the one who becomes the advocate and the companion in mission of St. Paul himself. And without Barnabas, there would be very likely no St. Paul. At, at least that's the way it did play out, in fact. And that encouragement that he gave, that, that protection, that validation that enabled Paul to be accepted by the first Christians is a ministry that all of us can engage in, the ministry of encouraging others by our words, by our actions, perhaps by a card or a phone call or a pat on the back, and by our prayer, to encourage in prayer those who are suffering, those who are in need, those who are struggling, especially those who perhaps are lost and have no faith. Let us pray today on the Feast of St. Barnabas that we will be that salt, that light, that city on a hill in the ways that we can in our own life and in, in a special way on the Feast of St. Barnabas to pray to be sons and daughters of encouragement to those most in need around us as we carry out our own vocation in Christ as priest, prophet, and king in the world where we live and dwell. Let us pray. Knowing that our Father hears the prayers of his children, we offer now our prayers and petitions. For bishops and priests, may God grant them a spirit of faithfulness and fortitude in their ministry, and especially this week as our bishops meet in their national con springtime conference in Kentucky, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our For all who hold civic office, may the guidance of the Holy Spirit help them enact laws and practices that promote the welfare and dignity of all, we pray to the Lord. For those searching for meaning or direction in their lives, may God open their hearts to his grace and that we may accompany them in their journey with our encouragement, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all of us here at this liturgy, may the graces of the Eucharist bring deeper unity and consolation to us in all our needs, we pray to the Lord. And for the intention of today's Mass, for John Duane, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear the prayers we offer and grant us what we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify with your blessings, we pray, O Lord, the offerings presented here, so that by your grace they may set us on fire with the flame of your love, by which St. Barnabas brought the light of the gospel to the nations through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, the living. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with, eye, with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to you, O glorious majesty, from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, whose feast we observe today, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, St. Teresa of Avila, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory, glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of eternal life, we humbly implore you, Lord, that what we celebrate in sacramental signs on the memorial of the blessed apostle Barnabas, we may one day behold unveiled through Christ our Lord. We invite you to remain with us for the devotional prayers immediately after Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing and say amen to each part of the blessing. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the holy apostle Barnabas. Amen. amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. Amen. So that through the intercession of the apostles, you may inherit the eternal homeland. For by their teaching, you possess firmness of faith. Amen. Amen. And may almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>